Trump. Here he is on O'Reilly last night. Well, it's a serious problem. We haven't seen anything like it since the Second World War, and it's getting worse and worse. And I was actually impressed in one way, but surprised that uh, Merkel in Germany allowed this to happen because they're really flowing through all over Europe. And if you notice, uh, Russia's not taking and China's not taking and the Gulf states, whether you look at Saudi Arabia or Qatar or any of them, they're taking none. But some of them are, and some of them are actually being very generous. Uh, it just really, I wonder, you know, where all these people are coming from exactly, and what are they representing? Because do you have people from ISIS in that group? You know, there's a lot of security risk with it, but something has to be done. It's a, an unbelievable humanitarian okay. problem. I hate the concept of it, but on a humanitarian basis with what's happening, you have to. You know, this was started oh. by President Obama when he didn't go in and do the job when he should have, when he drew the line in the sand, which turned out to be a very artificial line. But, you know, it's, uh, it's living in hell in Syria. There's no question about it. They're living in hell. They're living in hell. And then he goes on with a full clip out of the transcript here. For some reason, that cut off early. Uh, Shane, we got to take them. Just, just insane. And then he acts like Obama drew a line in the sand to take out Assad, as if he didn't take out Assad's why this happened. No, NATO backed the jihadis to do this, and now they've invaded back into Iraq, and most of these people coming in they've checked are Wahhabists and are the ones trying to take Syria over, but they couldn't, so now they'll just take the welfare in Europe. I mean, this is the, the shadow army of the globalists invading. Thank you for joining us. We're now into the second hour of this Worldwide Wednesday, the ninth day of September 2015 broadcast. Carl Pittman comes highly recommended. Uh, Ted Nugent, who's on in the next hour to talk about huge under-the-radar attacks on hunting, fishing, the Second Amendment culture, you name it. Uh, he's going to be uh, joining us, and he helped kick off Carl Pittman's campaign for sheriff uh, in Harris County down in Houston. Uh, what, third or fourth biggest city in the United States? That's the county it's in. Uh, the county itself is just exploding. That's where Carl Pittman grew up. He was in the Marine Corps for more than a decade, then started his own successful private business in real estate, then went back into law enforcement and has worked at a lot of different levels of the Harris County Sheriff's Department, running task force, you name it, then internal affairs. Uh, so he's done a lot. Uh, CarlForSheriff.com. I tell you, I've seen this guy give speeches. He was on the show last week when Jakari and Joe Biggs were hosting. And uh, just as patriotic, just as good, uh, just as articulate as, say, Richard Mack uh, or a David Clark. I mean, this is the type of sheriff we need. What a victory in one of the biggest counties in the country. Uh, to have a constitutional sheriff. He's not right-wing or left-wing. I'm not speaking for you. I've followed you uh, quite a bit. Uh, he's not right-wing or left-wing, folks. He's a constitutionalist, which means follow the rules of the country. And so it's great to have you, sir. We're very honored you drove up from Houston uh, to be here with us. Obviously, I want to cover the waterfront uh, with the lawlessness of the government. Your words, we're talking uh, before you went live. What you think the large strategy is? What do you think Soros is doing? with his agitators openly out promoting, deck the halls with dead cops at Christmas, put wings on them, fry the bacon. Obviously, there's some bad police out there. There's bad anybody. But what, what do the Democrats think they're doing? Seems like jumping the shark to just nakedly try to start a war with local police. Is that an attempt to intimidate local jurisdictions into going under uh, not even federal control, but this leftist globalist control? Break down your worldview, some about yourself, what you really think is happening, and what you would do heading up one of the biggest counties, uh, most populous counties in the country. Well, Alex, I'll tell you, what we have going on in the United States right now is an attempt by those in our government, uh, those that have been elected to lead this country, and uh, we find that these people are much more concerned with their own agendas than the agenda of taking care of the people in this country. And uh, I think what we've seen lately, whether it's in Ferguson or Baltimore, when you see what the president of the United States has done, and uh, I'm quite embarrassed uh, that he has uh, spent most of his time apologizing for America instead of standing up and supporting and defending the Constitution. But, you know, he is quick to go down and, and support uh you know, support activity that, uh, in my opinion, is just simply bad behavior. 
so, you know, Michael Brown, uh, the situation in New York, the situation in Baltimore, uh, we are watching the absolute erosion of law and order in this country. And so it's a dangerous thing. It's what we have to get away from. It's what I would encourage every single law enforcement officer in this country to do. But I, I, a special call out to the elected sheriffs of the county. You are in the perfect position to stand up against this kind of behavior. Because if we do not do it, we are going to, we're going to witness the collapse of America. And I just don't want to see that happen. I, I used to hear old timers like General Benton K. Parton, who headed up you know, major anti-Soviet operations, he was former head of the Air Force, and not just Air Force weapons development. And he also ran a lot of the secret projects. And he, he's now older and, and, and retired. Um, he's very old. But when he used to come on the show, he would lay out, once the left gets control, they just don't want power. They're going to cause a revolution to bring down local government and then basically use that crisis to have a war on the police, the military. They want a violent overthrow. And, and I'd read Saul Alinsky and the rest of it, and I knew that was part of the plan. I knew the weatherman had basically tutored Obama. But still, you don't imagine that once they get control, they'd really want to wreck the country and make it poor with Cloward and Piven. But that's what they're doing. And when you see them really trying to bring the country down, our founders said this country couldn't be taken down from without. We'd beaten the greatest empire the world had ever seen, but we could fall from within. Absolutely. And we are, I think, seeing the fall. Uh, what do you think their end game is? I think their end game, if you have paid attention to this new world order, and there is such an attempt to destroy capitalism and the way that most of us have come to recognize America, this is against everything these people believe in. So is it any surprise that uh, Barack Obama is so supportive or silent when it comes to even calling ISIS ISIS? I mean, there is a reason why. You know, I, I look back to my childhood. If you want to know who I am, take a snapshot and look at my mother. My mother, I'm, I, I'm what she produced. Barack Obama is a very good uh, product of his mother. So if you want to do a little reading and, and find out why he is the way he is, take a look at his mother. Those are the influences early in his life. And so what we're seeing shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. What sh surprises me is that he managed to get reelected. Well, you've been the American success story from a constitutional perspective, tell folks who's running for sheriff why Ted Nugent's endorsing you, Sheriff Arpaio, Sheriff Richard Mack, uh, and, and, and so many others. Because this is bigger than just Houston. We need to get people like you, of every race, color, and creed, to run for sheriff around the country and support good peace officers uh, that have good records like you do. Talk about your life. Well, you know, simply put, I, I was born in a uh, Folsher, Texas, two-room house, no running water until I was 15. And uh, my mother simply taught us after my dad died when I was in first grade that if we worked hard, we could do whatever we set our mind to. Uh, we didn't have to accept where we started as an end point. And so, therefore, I applied myself. I worked hard. But by the grace of God, I was able to accomplish many things in my life. But had I fallen into this thinking that I need to wait for the government to do everything for me, I might very well be sitting in that same little two-room house in Folsher. And uh, it was something that I believe that I owe something to not only those members of my family uh, that came before me, but I owe something to all of the Americans that came uh, before me uh, across the, the spectrum of the races, uh, because there were sacrifices made for this country that Quite frankly, uh, those trying to destroy it ought to be ashamed. But, you know, I have the endorsement of Joe Arpaio because Joe absolutely understands that if we do not stem the tide of this illegal alien problem, and I call it illegal alien problem because it is illegal and they are aliens. Well, notice they're taking the giant influx out of, out of North Africa and out of the Middle East filled with ISIS people, migrants, but no one else calls them migrants. Saudi Arabia won't take them. They tell us what words to use like we're in a cult or something. Well, I mean, you're right. They are illegal aliens. Mexico, if I try to go down there and have a baby for free, calls me an illegal alien under their federal law and will put me for a year in a labor camp. So why don't they get criticized? Why do we have to give everything for free? Please continue. Well, I, I, I think the problem is 
is the liberal left, the Democrat party in this country, they're hunting votes. They want votes. So they think if they can make friends by allowing all of these illegals to come in, they're going to fall in line and give them their votes. You go back and take a look in the history of this country, and we'll take just a snapshot of what LBJ did. LBJ knew absolutely for sure that if he did not figure out a way to get black Americans on board with the Democrat Party, it was going to be a short, short time before that party was gone. Because blacks were conservative and, and wouldn't go for communism. Absolutely. You, and go back and start. You look at what Lincoln did. I believe Lincoln ended up giving his life ultimately for getting slaves freed in this country. But so many black Americans fall in line with this idea that uh, the Democrat Party is there to help them. You look at the Jim Crow uh, laws in the South, written and promoted along with the Klan, promoted by the Democrat Party. But most black Americans that fall in line with that thinking uh, that the Democrat Party is there to help them and save them. All this free for all, give everything away does is create, in my opinion, it is a continuation of many blacks have never been able to leave the plantation. And that is a sad, sad state of affairs. Well, they admit under Cloward and Piven, they want everybody black, white, Hispanic. The economy so bankrupt, you got to go on welfare. I mean, that, that's their end game plan. They don't hide it. That's what's so crazy. Well, well, many of these people who are falling in and thinking that the Democrat parties are to help them, when all this goes bad, it'll be far too late for them to figure it out. But the end game is there's going to be the super elite and those with nothing. Yep. That's where it is. Nothing in the middle. That's why George Soros. How does Soros, because I mean, I would never say this because I'm not a cold-blooded killer and I believe people should be tried for crimes they've committed. I want due process. How does Soros get away and, and, and the White House as well, the Justice Department, clearly running and funding groups saying go out, kill the police. Uh, just randomly police are to blame for all the problems. And, and why are police groups around the country, they're starting to respond, but it seems like they're not fighting hard enough against this and saying, we know what you're doing. I just can't believe they're this arrogant. Well, well quite simply, this idea of being political correct, politically correct, has got people scared to death to stand up and say what needs to be said and do what needs to be done. So Barack Obama can virtually do anything he wants. He's going to get a pass. So people and, are paralyzed. Oh, absolutely. Paralyzed with fear because God forbid if a conservative, particularly a white conservative, says something against the president, instantaneously deemed to be a racist. You know, I look at it and say, I'm going to judge this man on his performance. The only thing I'm going to pick uh, by color is maybe a suit or maybe a car. But everything else, I'm looking for good performance. Barack Obama has been one of the most radical, poor-performing president, at least in my lifetime. Black unemployment's doubled. Yes, absolutely. And most black people are still supporting him for one reason, simply because he looks like him. And that's embarrassing. That's the opposite of what Martin Luther King said. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's inverted reality. It's insane. We're going to come back and talk more about what you think is coming in the future. Carl for Sheriff.com. Carl Pittman, an impressive guy. And, you know, we love having good sheriffs on. We also love having people that are running for sheriff, and he's got a lot of backing, doing good in the polls. He has a very good chance of winning. And I want to talk about how we get you and other sheriffs elected, but he also wrote a book, The Personal Journey of a Black Common Sense Conservative, Carl Pittman. The book is available uh, on his website, and I can't wait uh, to read it. Carl for sheriff com. And if you want to join us on air, we'll take a few calls before this hour ends. Uh, it's 800-259-9231. And I tell you what I appreciate about Ted Nugent. Uh, Ted is the real deal. Uh, he's not a fake. He is a maniac. I love maniacs. He's, and, and he travels around the country uh, just like uh, Charlton Heston did, who was a big part of the real civil rights movement when Republicans got it passed. It wasn't the Democrats. And again, I'm not even a Republican because the leadership's so bad. The, you know, they're a bunch of blue blood rhinos. But... It's just weird how the Republicans are the ones that got all that done, and Eisenhower and my grandfather that ran for office in East Texas and won on a uh, you know uh, pro-integration platform, and then the Democrats just flipped it around and said the NRA is the Klan. I mean, they just invert reality. Uh, but but speaking of inverting reality, I've been asking a lot of the questions here. But but but. What are some of the other points you want to get out about what this country's facing? Because what I like that you have to say in your speeches is 
we're in a lot of trouble.